Hey, what's up, you guys? This is Sheila B. And I'm coming to you with another review of Grown and Gospel Season 1, Episode 4. First off, I want to say Happy Resurrection Sunday to each and every one of you. Um, yes, happy, 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 happy Resurrection Sunday. Um, this episode, it doesn't pick up, pick up where it left off, but it does um start off with Latasha talking to Nikki and y'all please forgive me because I should have done this episode a couple days ago but there was a death in my family on my husband's side and we had to travel to go to a funeral and um if you believe in Jesus Christ please pray for my husband's side of the family it was a very very tragic tragic death and oftentimes we always say gone too soon but I mean, God has his own timing with everybody. God's time is not our time. His way is not our way. His thoughts are not our thoughts. So what we think is something that may be so short to us, it is, it is the assignment that um, he has given each and every one of us to fulfill. Um, but nevertheless, we're going to get into grown and gospel. Okay. Okay, so like I said, oh yeah, don't forget to like, comment, and like, comment, and subscribe. The more you like the video, it goes through the algorithm, and more more people be will begin to view my channel. I'm on the road to three thousand, and I'm trying to create a village with all of us. And yes, here we go. So Latasha, the Latasha, I think Latasha went to Nikki's. No, Nikki went to Tasha's house, right? And she was telling her about the tragedy <laughs> that went on at her home um, with her ex-husband. I think it's Varun, whatever his name is. So, you remember that you're going to let my arm fall off when she stretched her hand out and he didn't want to shake her hand and he didn't want to give her no love or affection, you know. But anyway, so she was saying that she was ready for him to come over and they began to, you know, talk and she wanted him to come to the bedroom. He didn't want to go and the cameras was rolling, right? So after everybody left, he's, he left the house and went back to his hotel room and told her to come over there. I said, this, Tasha, don't go over there. I was just like, I know you didn't go over there, but... As they got to talking, and then the friend was like, "But yeah, you went over there because you was you was thinking with that thing and not that thing. You know what I'm saying? You was thinking with that thing thing and not that thing, which is your head. You know." And I was just like, "This man can manipulate you and make you believe or make you feel however you allow him to feel, and that's what he did. And I really do believe that he has a whole woman boyfriend. He got somebody else." And he knew that he was being filmed and he didn't want to be on camera kissing on you and touching on you or doing whatever he wanted to do with you. Even though you were his wife, still legally. You know what I'm saying? He didn't want to show that because he was on camera. He didn't want the people to see. Now, I'm going to say allegedly, allegedly. But these are my feelings because why would he call you after everybody is gone? He's in his whole space. No cameras, no nothing. And then he want to touch you on your inside parts and make you call his name. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, really? Girl. And I'm all the way with Nikki. If y'all if ain't seeing eye to eye, why are you doing this? Like, why are you putting yourself out? And Tasha, I do understand the, 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 the you don't want to be married for a third time. And, and the church hates divorce. But the thing about it is, it's so many people in that church house that they got divorced. Please believe, baby, I'm a church baby pew member since birth and from the womb. <laughs> I've been in church and uh, holiness, too. And the thing about it is, them people done got married. Them people done got divorced. Them people be cheating on their wife. Them people, them, them people, them people just people. They go through the same things people go through every day at the end of the day. And if it takes the grace of God to keep us every day. So don't feel ashamed. If you got to leave a relationship, that's not doing you any good, especially if your husband is not giving you what he need, what he needs to give you as a husband. And I really do believe he, I, I don't believe he's faithful. And I understand you broke down to, 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 um, what's her name? Nikki and told her that you were unfaithful. 
And it is a shock. But the thing about it was, even before you stepped out, he already stepped out mentally. You know what I'm saying? He stepped out in his heart. And I don't believe in divorce either. But if you are neglecting me mentally, physically, you, I really do believe that you're doing that something. I mean, you got to give it time because the, the lie is going to open up. You know what I'm saying? It's going to open up. But, you know, they do say death or adultery. But, yeah, shoot, you already committed adultery. <laughs> Anyway, my will. And if he want a divorce, then he can do that. Yeah, I mean, even though it be on your side, cause he, you ain't got really no proof that he doing something that still happened. But I mean, hey, it is what it is. But girl, just like Nikki said, girl, you you hard headed and you stubborn. And I mean, if you want your marriage to work, then let it work. But at the end of the day, it has to be two people. Period. It has to be two people. And you shouldn't be ashamed of what other people will think about you. Because them same people that have been looking at you, child, they household dirty too. And that's that's real talk. Because people, judgmental people judge judgmental people. People that really don't care, they ain't. They already understand we just human at the end of the day. And we are fighting a fight to be right. Every day. That's why Paul said, I die daily. That means you're going through trials and tribulations every day, daily. And it's up to us to be like, you know, I'm, I'm going to try my best not to do this today. I'm trying not to fall today. I'm trying not to miss the mark today. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, and it's a lot of that going on in this episode. And I don't want to be repeating myself a lot, but a lot of that happened. It's, it, it happened a lot. But girl, it's, it's time for you to to chunk them deuces. I mean, I, you know what? Forgive me. Do whatever you feel like you need to do in your heart. That's all I got to say. All right. So now you have Bree and Elijah. I don't know what. I forgot this man's name the last time I reviewed this show. I think I called this man Julian or something. I forget. But he's just so irritating to me. Anyway. So, but and my thing is, Bree, if this man is always being so rude to you, why are you always around him? And ain't you, why are you always around him? Like, and I don't want to be like, ain't you married? But it almost seemed like he got a crush on you. I don't know. Maybe you just kind of, I don't know, naive or see it or don't see it. But he seems like he got a crush on you. The way he just act. I don't know. But he just, he irritating to me. But he outside. He waiting on Bree to come talking about she late. And then y'all planning a baby shower. He told me, so what you going to do when you got to go do these shows? Dude, it's a y'all at a. I understand you don't want nobody to keep you waiting. I get that. I really get it. But she said she got a. She been working 12 hours and she doing all this stuff. But I mean, y'all planning a baby shower. Y'all really could have ordered a lot of this stuff on Amazon. But I guess y'all needed to record for this show and do whatever y'all need to do. And then they around here looking for horses and not horses and carriages. Yeah. They over here trying to look for car seats and buggies and stuff. And he already, he keep. Talking about Brie, talking about she broke and she ain't got no money. But I seen she had them YSL heels on that he bought her. But anyway. Um, yeah, but talking about, I know you're going to give me $5. Dollars. Yeah. But anyway, he going to keep bragging on you about you broke and ain't got no money because it's your mindset. And he believed that you are what you eat or what you think or whatever it is. I mean, which to a certain degree that is true. But you still have to put faith and action into what you're trying to do. So, I mean, hey, it is what it is. They getting ready for the. Oh, they also bring up the thing with Shayna and them inviting everybody to the baby shower. And he said he ain't got no issue with Shayna. Yeah. And she said she don't either because at the end of the day, like I said in my last review, I didn't think that Shayna was lying. So, and then I'll get to that later. So, they going to work that whole thing out with all, everybody else in the guest list. All right, so now we have this scene where Bree has gotten everybody together. And Bree has gotten everybody together so she can tell the whole church out her business. Now, I know you on a reality show, and I know you want to be transparent, but some things I myself would not say. I mean... I mean, if you want to say it, it's your say it because it's your testimony. But sometimes I need to get to know my audience just a little bit better before I start to disclose all of my little intimate details about my life. Some people, 
I'm, I am a very guarded person. You know what I'm saying? I tell you what I want you to know based on my comfortability. And maybe she was comfortable. Maybe she was. I don't know. Or maybe the producers are pressuring her to say stuff just to get the storyline going. I mean, either way. Either way. So she got the people together, right? And then she proceeds to tell them that she was a stripper in her past life. And Nikki was like, hey, you had to get that money, child. Shake some change. Shake some, shake some, shake some for a piece of change. You know, so you got to get it how you live. And then ja Elijah is just like, wow, it's always the quiet ones. Child, the quiet ones, the loud ones. It's all the ones. If you if you in a hard ship, sometimes you do things that you're not so... Um, that you're not so happy about, you know, sometimes you do things that you could be, that you could be ashamed of. I mean, it happens. It's life, 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 life. And, um, and then, um, when she said she was a stripper, Shana was like, for your husband and for the people, child, for the people, her husband ain't got that much money to help her mama pay them bills. I mean, what? She said she was doing it to help her mama, you know, but I, and then at the end of the day, everybody got a testimony. It's so many preachers. And, and and deaconess and female pastors and stuff. They 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 tell their story. They was lesbians. They was homosexual. They was um, they was pimping and prostituting. Uh, all these people come from somewhere. All these people come from somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, everybody's journey is different. You know, but it is what it is. At the end of the day, it is what it is. You know, everybody has a story to tell about. They was boosters. <laughs> they was they was they was all they was all kind of people are in the church and if somebody is judging you for who you are or what you used to be then that's not your audience you go to where the people are because at the end of the day the church is for the sinner period the church is for the sinner because saints are sinners that are trying to be saved that's what we are every day we are trying because the Bible says we were born in sin and we were shaped in sin. Born in iniquity and shaped in iniquity. That's sin. So that's what we are. And we're trying every day to fight that. You know? So, I mean, it is what it is. Um, Now, everybody and, 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 and everybody was just pretty much like, okay, girl, it's cool. You know, we applaud you for your transparency and yeah, they hug on her. They give her some love, and she's very appreciative of it. Now you have Nikki, and Nikki is Nikki is on the phone with her 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 husband that's in jail. And then she tell him that she had on a silk robe. I thought that was a paying suit, or maybe she was just trying to set the scene in his mind since. Since he can't see her through the phone, I mean, I don't know uh, what, <laughs> what. what? <laughs> so Nikki ends up, and then she was like, "So what took you so long to call me?" And he was like, "You know, he was waiting in line." And so she was like, "Anyway, the whole line conversation." Then she starts telling her husband all the business about Bree and all the business business about Shayna, and pretty much she was saying she gonna have to talk to Shayna because she don't want Shayna to feel like she was taking sides, even though she's been knowing Shayna for a long time. She says she really don't care, you know. But Nikki is her friend. She wasn't taking Nikki's side per se, but she was just on, you know, that's her friend. But you was slick taking her side. Cause that's your friend. That's who you're closest to. Even though you're saying you want, you are neutral in the situation. Unconsciously, subconsciously, you were taking your friend's side. I mean, that's just what we do. Cause that's your friend. Whomever you're closest to, you tend to gravitate to their opinions. And that's pretty much what you did. But your husband was like, yeah, you need to get that right. Cause that ain't got nothing to do with you. And you don't want to be losing friends over no mess or potential Friends that could have good longevity over some mess. And I do agree. So that pretty much what that was. But girl. <laughs> and when they was talking, I said, boy, this sure is a long conversation. And then you heard, dar, 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 uh, he gone. <laughs> Whatever they say. Your inmate 83456229 is off the line. And he was still talking. I said, they so rude. They sure know how to cut people off. Yeah, I remember my family members was in jail. They called me. We be really having a good conversation. All of a sudden, you have 10, 30 seconds. No, they said you have one minute. <laughs> Three seconds. <laughs> I mean, like, God, no. But anyway, it is what it is. 
And so now you have Latasha, she going down there to see um, a divorce lawyer to see what she can do. So she get down there to the divorce lawyer, right? And she starts to tell her um, her side of the story about their divorce. And she was saying like she didn't want to get a divorce. She was pretty much saying that he was like, do y'all got kids together? Do y'all have bank accounts together? Do y'all have assets together? Do what y'all got together? And she said she don't want none. She just pretty much want to get out. It, but she really don't want to leave. She don't want to, she don't really want to stay. She don't really want to go, but she really want to know if, can they get it together? <laughs> get it together. Get it to get there, you know, but I guess the conversation gets a little hard for her. And cause you know, I, I, I don't want to repeat everything that she said, because we've been hearing it. We've been hearing everything she's been saying over and over and over again. So we pretty much know, but she starts to get in her emotions and she starts to get in her feelings and she gets up and she walk out and the man's still sitting there like, you all right? You going to come back? Are you okay? So you, 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 you just going to leave. <laughs> but anyway, child, bless her heart. You're going to make a decision that's best for you whenever you make it. Okay. All right. So now we have this whole sit down with the, the crew. Oh, yeah. Might I add, when Brianna told all her business to the to the church members, and then that's when um Elijah said, you are officially in the group because he found out that she was a stripper. Maybe he thinks she may be a little bit easier. Maybe that sparked his curiosity in, as in maybe how far he can get with her. I'm just saying, allegedly, you know, I don't know. But he just seemed like a, just a little creepy mean, a mean creeper. You know, ugh, just, ugh. y'all can tell I really don't care for him like that, right? I don't even know this man. But coming off of what he's saying, what he do, his character is not um, gravitational. It's more like um, reflective. No, 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 repellent, Re repellent. Don't repel it, get stuff away. Yeah, yeah, it's a repellent. <laughs> anyway, so you have this whole meeting, right, with the people. And um, do they, yeah, they have this whole meeting. And the main part of the meeting, I think that he, um, Jay brings up Bree. And he brings up her in the strip club and how that would affect her gospel record. And as I was saying earlier, it's so many people in the gospel realm that do, man, these, these, these people, I don't know. And that's why I was so, and that's why I don't like to know church folks business right there. I don't like to know church folks business because really now this is real talk because people sing gospel and we, when they sing and we sing about Jesus and him loving us and, and all of these things. And you know what I'm saying? And people, people, okay. People like to see people lives that are perfect, even though they're not perfect. And people say, that's who I want to be like, even though I'm not in a perfect place, it's like they have a vision in their head of somebody that someone that they think that's perfect. It almost comes to the point of idolization. Like a lot of these people in their church, their pastors, they look at their pastors as being perfect people, like they never did any wrong. But the reason why we have testimonies is to tell somebody about the test that they have went through in their lives, right? And Sometimes in my head, I just want to see, hear the church, hear the music, and just go on about my life. But when I actually see, and then the difference is, now this is the difference. If, okay, like Brie in her situation, this is, if this is in her past, I can understand it. She comes into the gospel world. I'll be like, oh, that's what she used to do. She ain't doing it no more. She's, she's trying to be somebody better. I'm good with that. But when there is a person that's singing gospel or they're, they have the proclivity to say that they're living a life of Christ and, they're, and every time they're in the news doing something, 
They're always, you always hear them out here messing up, doing something. Those are the people that I really can't listen to because I'm like, okay, you just like me, which you are, you just like me. But sometimes I don't want to be knowing that I don't be want to know all your business. I don't, you know what I'm saying? I really, really don't. I don't be want to know that you out here cheating on your wife. I know you out here got babies by other people. You out here, you know what I'm saying? I don't be wanting to know that because I'm just like, there does have to be a difference, but it's okay. It's the present you. I just want you to try to live as close to the biblical teaching as you can. Now, it's a difference if you've done it in your past, but if you're presently doing it, then that's me looking at you like, nah, I'm good on you. Cause right now you playing with my emotions. You telling me to live safe and you telling me to live right when you really not doing it like in real time. But then when it's in your past, I'm like, yeah, you overcame it because we always teach it in church. You can overcome, you can overcome, but if you telling me that you can overcome it, I don't ever see you overcoming. How am I supposed pull up supposed to believe that we can overcome or we can become new? You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense to you? Like if somebody in real time is always saying you can become new, you can be better, but I always see you messing up. It's hard for me to listen to you when I always see you messing up. But if you were in your past and you did it and you telling me how to get to that point right now to where you saying, I'm not who I used to be, then I'm like, okay, so you were like me. So now you're telling me that I can be better. Just like if you're an alco a alcoholic, right? You go to AA Anonymous, right? And it's a continuation. It's not 12 steps and then you're done. It's 12 steps, but I'm still continuing to be better because they always say I am an alcoholic, even though they have haven't had a drink in 24 years. That is the testimony to the person saying, you can be like me, 24 years alcoholic free because I'm trying to be better, right? But if you say I'm an alcoholic and I'm trying not to be drinking like that no more, I can't follow you because you drunk with me. <laughs> we both drunk. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? I hope I cleared it up because that's the reason why I'm like, I don't really like to know what the people do in real time. Now, if it's the past time, I'm like, okay, 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 because I'm trying to be better. So I want to follow somebody that I can be better. You know what I'm saying? If that makes sense. I hope it do. Because I ain't trying to be like no hypocrite or nothing like that. And I'm not trying to be like I'm judgy or anything either. I'm just like, I want to see somebody that's in a progression that's farther than I am because I want to get to where you are. Be like Christ, period. But he does give us examples here on earth that we can follow. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Okay, I'm going to move on. But anyway, that's Jay was saying he didn't think that. Child, I don't want to hold on a whole rampage, on a whole, on a whole diatribe or whatever. But Jay was saying he didn't think the gospel community. But the gospel community will accept us, accept her as long as it's in her past. But now if she's singing church music and you see her stripping, I ain't listening to you. <laughs> I'm not. And I'm being honest. I'm not. You still stripping in real time and you want to tell me to be like Christ? No, I'm not doing it. Period. <laughs> no. But if it was in your past, you ain't doing it no more. Then I'm like, okay, well, she overcame that. We could. Cool you know, that ain't judging if you're doing it now. Like she a stripper. That's not judging if you're doing it. But it's judging if you used to do it, you ain't doing no more. That's judging. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> anyway, so then, um, what's her name? Tasha stands, Tasha talks, and she tells everybody about Veron and the, the dinner or lack thereof that happened between them. So while she's trying to lay the groundwork and tell them what was going on with her and Veron, somebody he had the people coming over and you know had to clean the house and set the living room up and had a violinist. And while she's trying to talk, Elijah keeps jumping in. He keeps jumping in. You know what I'm saying? Won't let the girl finish. So now she's getting aggravated because, number one, she's hurt. She's in her feelings. And sometimes people just have to vent. They don't need your extra. There is a time to shut up, and then there is a time to speak. And at this moment, Elijah, you are overstepping your time. You know what I'm saying? So then 
She was like, okay, what? She just get irritated. Then he starts talking about you move from this four bedroom place over there into a one bedroom. If she got married and moved with her husband, what is the deal? Why are you so mad? I understand you probably didn't like the guy. I get that. But some people have to trip over their own foot. Some people have to trip over their own foot. You can tell a person, you know what I'm saying? I don't think he's right. I don't think, but you still got to let them go so they can find out for themselves. It ain't for you. That ain't for you. And then when they do trip on their own foot and they fall, then you as a friend are to help them get back up. That's what you do. Listen. And then it becomes a whole a argument it becomes an exchange because and, and, and it's like i she said i've been knowing you since we were kids and you've always been this way but that's y'all fault he's been that way because you all have allowed him to be rude obnoxious obnoxious and to invoke his opinion and to make everything about him that's y'all fault y'all get mad at y'all self don't get mad at him because y'all created a monster that's y'all fault and now because you're in a heavy situation and he's doing the same thing he's doing to to you like he did to Bree or whatever hey give yourself a round of applause because y'all created that and it ended on a bad note which it did because elijah was 100 wrong you know what I'm saying? She don't need to. I told you to. I, I told you so right now. She just need a friend. And whatever decision she going to make, she going to make it in her time. She don't need you to be saying, hurry up, make a decision, leave the man. You know, she don't need all that. Not now. Wait till she didn't, you know, moved on. And then she brought up Nikki. Nikki, he brought up Nikki. But Nikki is her friend. So she can tell Nikki. And Nikki will understand because Nikki is in her situation too. So she can clearly understand what she wants and what she needs. And she can even be a little bit stern with her because she knows that Nikki is coming from a good place. So y'all people know your friends. You know when they being messy and you know when they being good. But anyway, so that didn't end well. Yeah, it didn't end well because she got up, started to put her stuff in her purse. You know when you mad, you start to put all your stuff that ain't even your stuff in somebody's purse to get rid of the lead. Anyway, y'all. So now we have the night here of the, we have the whole night of the, of the baby shower, right? And so also in the confessional and um, when they were talking amongst themselves, they brought up the whole Shayna thing. And she said that she's going to have to pretty much apologize to Shayna because she found out that what she heard wasn't real. Just like I said in the last episode. Anyway, I'll get there. But it's a beautiful party, and I don't know if the same party planner that 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 planned Bree's birthday party planned this one. If she did, you can tell that the budget was very, very different. You can tell. That's all I'm saying. So, um, Tasha comes in and she sits down, and her and Bree have a whole conversation about you know Elijah and how he was interrupting her and wouldn't allow her to finish, and how he was just being rude and disrespectful. And Bree said, "You know what?" I can agree with that because that's how he does me all the time. Y'all be thinking it's a kiki when it's on me, but now the shoe on y'all foot, now you tired of it. Now y'all exchanging words. But hey, first I was like, that's just Elijah. Now y'all like Elijah got to change anyway. But now um, they get up. Oh, Elijah comes in giving people teacups and stuff. He came in late and then they announced that, um, they announced that Shayna is coming in, her and her beautiful family, her husband. She's, you can tell that she's very excited. She's very um, um, surprised. And it was really, really good that they did this for her. So now, being that um, Latasha tripped over her own foot, she had to apologize to Shayna because Shayna was not lying. And like I said, the person that told her this stuff that was lying was her husband because her husband needed a reason to have mad day and to get upset with her. He was just clocking reasons to be upset with her so he can leave. That's all he was doing allegedly. I'm going to say allegedly. But in my mind, that's what I believe that he was doing. He was just bringing up stuff because he was, that's what he was doing. He didn't want her no more. Or he wanted her when he wanted her. So he lied. He lied. And now she had to apologize. Shayna wasn't a liar. It was your man. And he's been the liar. Yeah. 
And it's what it is. Allegedly, he's been a liar. I'm going to say that. You know. Now, after they talk, Elijah comes by and she said, I think, did she say they need to have a conversation? I think she said they need to have a conversation. So they go over there. Over there, I think Elijah said it or somebody said it. But they get over there and they start talking, right? But the first thing that Tasha said, so are you going to apologize? Elijah said he ain't apologize because it was the truth. And she said, no. Um, are you going to apologize? Because I'm not going to have a conversation with you until you apologize first. And Elijah, the thing is, like Tasha said, it wasn't about you speaking the truth. It was the way in which you was doing. It was the tone. It was the pettiness. It was the, mm, I knew this one going to work. It was everything underneath that was giving apologies. It was the unnecessary interruptions. It was the all about me moment. It was you trying to be on camera and act like a diva. You want to make this the Elijah show. This is what you want to make. And she was saying, are you going to apologize? And she was reading him because she was telling him stern and in her, in her position, she was saying, no, he, she told him, um, you're going to have to apologize to me. And she broke down the reasons why. You go, and then he had the nerve to raise his voice and say, if you, you change your voice or shut up. So I'm like, shut up. I'm like, and God, oh, who was you talking to? I would have punched him in his gut or in his neck or in them glasses. Child, them glasses would have been crooked. And that, and that little bandana would have been on the floor. Who was you talking to? She was like, uh-uh, I don't want no parts of this. You can have this. Cause I'm not about to do this. You're not about to be yelling at me, yelling at me in front of everybody in this baby shower. Chad, you gonna eat this cake? Anime. He was gonna be anime because that cake was gonna be smashed in his face. Like, who was you talking to? For real? She said, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, I'm unsubscribing to this show." Cause she went out there, she walked out. She's like, "I'm not doing this. Y'all can have this." And I agree. You will not. One thing I do not disrespect. No, I demand my respect and. She said it. I'm not doing this. I'm not about to be a part of the Elijah show because that's what he's doing. He's putting on a show. Those cameras are on him and he act like he don't know how to act. Dude. And this is the part too. Cause she, what she tell him, ah, you remember you're going to eat them words because her brother was like, dude, you ain't going to be talking to my sister like that. I'm like, okay, big brother, you better step up. And you see Elijah didn't have all that tone with him. He was trying to calm that thing down. See, that's how I know. Now, unless they going to show something on the next episode to where they going, he going to get booked with him. Like, look, if you book, really, his tone kind of changed because he know now that somebody is equally on his level or above his level because Elijah needs Jay. Jay is the producer. So, Elijah can't, he can't have that same energy with Jay because Jay going to be like, look, I don't have to do your record. The way you talking to my sister, boy, bye, bye. And I'm glad that Elijah stood up because I'm sick and tired of Elijah getting away with stuff and nobody saying nothing. But granted, I mean, it's his sister because he, you better. I'm going to tell mama if you don't. <laughs> but anyway, um, I know I probably went on a, a, a whole bunch of rants through this, but I did hope it helped somebody. And I know I probably forgot a lot of things. Charlie, she may have our heart. Jesus, remember Jesus loves you. And y'all have a great day. Like, comment, and subscribe. Bye.